So today we're going to be checking out a Rotten Mango video by the great Stephanie Su. And this one is going to be talking about the actor Lee Sung Hyun. First of all, RIP, rest in peace to Lee Sung Hyun. Um, it's very unfortunate that we're even watching this video, to be honest, because it's just a reminder of how unforgiving the K industry is, you know, with idols and celebrities. Um, Lee Sun Kyun's case is very, very unfortunate because this is a case that I'm very familiar with. Um, I don't know the details, which is why we're going to be watching Stephanie's video today. But I do know um, this actor. I am familiar with him. And I do know that his case was basically, or based on my understanding, you know, he was false, falsely accused of drug possession, I think and k media and you know the populace was just very hard on him for like quite a few months i think and i think he was also in and out um i don't know if it was of like court or something i i don't want to say the wrong things you know we're going to be finding out today but it's just very unfortunate that you know people tend to bully people so much um, in Korea, I know bullying and suicide and things like that, it's so bad there because of just how people are viewed, you know, and how unforgiving um, their society is, which is very, very unfortunate. But um, I do want to find out more about, you know, what was really going on with his case, the truth about his case, you know. Um, I can only hope that, you know, all the truths came to light. You know, it's been a couple months since he has passed and I haven't really been seeing much about his case in like, you know, my, my media space. So this is why we're watching Stephanie's video today and I just want to jump right into it. Um, I know that a lot of you subscribe to the channel for stephanie reactions and to be honest i love her videos it's just that they're very long so a lot of the time i don't get the chance to sit down and record but this time when i saw that she put this out i definitely wanted to check it out so let's just jump into it yeah bada bing, bada boo. in a prison cell in south korea there's these two very pretty very young girls sitting at the edge of their prison beds they're in the same cell and they're either going to be very friendly or they're going to rip each other apart by the end of this there's going to be no middle ground here so they start feeling each other out and how old are you i'm 95 you Side note, in Korea, usually when someone asks you for your age, you give them the year of your birth first. It's it's interesting, but 95 meaning 1995. So by this point, she would have been what? Maybe 24, 25 when they met? It's so interesting. Isn't that like more math you have to do? Yeah. <laughs> I guess they don't really care how old you are. They want to know if you're older and how many years in relation. Mm. But then when you give birthdays and dates, it gets confusing, right? Yeah, okay, so the, all they care about the seniority. Like, exactly. Am I, yeah. So if we're both 95, then the next question would be what month? Mm. And then it's very quick to decide who's older. The other girl goes, I'm 91, so that means I'm four years older than you. I'm your unni, I guess, which is like an older sister. So what are you in here for? Fraud? You? Drugs. These two girls, Nami and SJ, would smile at each other. Because this was good. This was very good. They got to planning. They promised each other once they got out, they would get apartments in the same building, just a few floors apart, so that they could always be together. They felt a friendship that was developing. And while- This is- this feels so airy. Now I'm rereading the title and, and seeing the part about two women blackmailing him, and this is making me very- I don't know, very anxious where this story is headed. <laughs> They're planning their futures out together. On the other side of the world, Parasite was winning an Academy Award for Best Picture. Standing on stage, feeling on top of the world, would be Lee sung Gun. He was an A-list actor in South Korea already, but this is like a new height of his career, a new height of fame. He's internationally known now. But in less than four years, he would end up dead. And these two girls from prison would have something to do with it. Wow. Wow, I was not expecting it to... Okay. On 
honestly, if this turns out to be a case where somebody made up everything about this and he died because of it, like it's sponsors who have made it possible for it's gonna break my heart to be honest a nonprofit that protects emotional health and prevents suicides for our nation's teens and young adults by giving them the skills and supports that they need to thrive today but also tomorrow this episode's partnerships have also made it possible to support Rotten Mango's growing team of dedicated researchers and translators. We'd also like to thank you guys for your continued support as we work on our mission to be worthy advocates of these causes. Now, as always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com. We did have our Korean translators and researchers assist on this case, but I will say that there is... There's a lot going on, and there's a lot of other people involved, conspiracies about why this became such an overblown investigation. There's differing sources on the exact timeline of events. We try to gather all the accurate facts of the case and compile them in an easy to digest format for you whilst we try our best to remain neutral. But if there is anything at all that is lost in translation, miscommunicated, or even anything additional that you would like us to know about this case, please let us know down in the comments. And a quick content warning, there is brief mention of suicide in this episode so if that is something that might bring you to a dark place today please just take it easy skip this one go watch a comfort show and stay safe so with that being said let's get started Nami had been out of prison for a while, and everything was working out relatively like she had planned. She's living in the same apartment complex as her best friend, Estre, that she met in prison. She's running her own business that's doing really well. And then, boom, a text message comes in ready to ruin everything for Nami. An unknown profile on Telegram messages her. The user's name is Nenem Din. Nami has never heard of this username. She has no idea who this is. This person isn't even in her contacts. It's a total stranger. She goes to open the message and it reads, the stuff on your photo albums. What is this person even talking about? So she texts back, what about my photo albums? A lot of fucking celebrity photos, enough to make the nation flip shit, huh? Whoever this person was, they knew exactly what kind of line of work that Nami was in. So she quickly texts back, unfazed. My goodness, I didn't know we were still living in the past era. I'm feeling under the weather, so I'm just gonna head to sleep now. What an odd exchange. Like, who the hell is this person? Nami's trying so hard to play it cool, but it is bothering her. She immediately screenshots all of the text messages and sends them to her best friend, SJ. And the both of them, they go into detective mode. They're trying to investigate. But this is an account from Telegram, which is anonymous. They have nothing to go off of, but maybe the blackmailer's username, texting cadence, any hints in the messages themselves, which are basically none. They barely exchanged messages so far. So let's start with the name. Denem Tim. SJ the friend immediately screenshots something and sends it to Nami. It's a package of instant noodles. Pibimyeon. Which is like a cold, spicy stir-fried noodle, but the brand calls that noodle Denem Tim. It's a household brand in South Korea. So this is just a food brand? Yeah, name? so I guess it would be the same as someone's username being SpaghettiOs. Hmm. It's a brand by Chef Boyardee. Like, that's yeah, the name yeah. of their product. Yeah. But it's technically, I mean, and I don't know if you would call it spaghetti, but you get the idea. It's very brand specific. Hmm. So SJ sends Nami a screenshot of the noodle packaging and she says, Nami, young people these days call Pibimyeon by the brand's name instead. Din. Do you think this person messaging you is... And Nami's like, I know exactly who it is. Oh. Precisely. It's Chung So this case is actually has a lot of very random, bizarre people involved. One of them being Chung Ta Eun. That's their name, Ta Eun. Ta Eun is kind of famous. They're an Eulchang contestant winner. Eulchang is literally translates to best face. Like Eul is Eulgur, face, Eul. And then Jang is like the best. So they would have these reality shows, contestant shows, contest shows, where they would bring in the best faces from the nation and just... Basically, whoever has the ideal face wins the contest. Like a beauty contest. Yes, like but it's Korea. very face specific. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not personality. You don't really like answer questions. You don't do the bikini shows. It's all about your face. Mm. Is it like a really prestige title or is it yeah. more like a TV? Oh, it's like a real award. Well, I wouldn't say it's like Miss America, but it is. Um, it's very. It's a high compliment to be called an altang. Oh. But it's not really something that you have to win through that competition it's you could call anyone on the internet and it's a compliment basically. yes and they have a very specific look 
Mm. It's like that perfect face look. Like I would say maybe Karina from Aespa is the best comparison. Like that is the it look. And Taeun got famous for having a good face. And eventually using that fame, Taeun would start working in the music industry. But probably what they're the most known for is dating Han Seo-hee. She's going to become very important in this. She is probably one of the most controversial K-pop trainees to ever exist. She's been involved in almost every major K-pop idol scandal. The I feel like I saw her name trending literally yesterday. What the hell? I'm scared for where this story is going to go because I started this not expecting there to be so many random moving parts you know two of them briefly dated then had a very public and messy breakup where they both accused each other of being physically violent and abusive so side note about han sai she was involved in big bang tops wheat scandal that happened in like 2011 so she's just kind of involved in all the drama okay, okay. any drama okay. she's in there somehow now, after this breakup between Han Seo-hee, she's going to get a question later, and Jung da -eun, they all run in the same circle still. So they all hang out with the same people even after they broke up. Okay. And they hang out with Nami and SJ. Ta -eun also has a criminal history stemming from selling drugs on Telegram. And this is where the dots start connecting some more. Ta -eun's Telegram username used to be Japageri which is a brand of black bean noodle. So black bean noodle is the dish, but japageti is a very specific noodle brand's version of that dish, and they call it japageti. It's not even black bean noodles. It's the brand's name for it, just as how nenimtin is not spicy cold noodles. Mm. It's the brand's name for it. So that's how she made the connection because yes. she always uses brand's name as her name. And Taun is younger than them in early 20s, so they're like, okay, young people call pibimyeon nenentim, you know, which mm -hmm. older people don't really do that. They also really like to use these brand names for food as their username. And on top of that, the two girls remember that Taun also had a bit of coding experience. So to them, everything is clicking, everything is making sense. Talon did this. Talon hacked into Nami's photo album and got all the pictures of the celebrities and is now blackmailing her because Talon is the blackmailer. Whoever the spicy cold noodles were though, they're just getting started. They text Nami some more. You're f***ing ignoring my text when I see that you've clearly read it? I'll go straight to the celebrities instead then. Get ready to get f***ed. Another text, make $75,000 by Wednesday and I'll add in another $8,000 for each day that you're late. I'm not going to ask for more after this. I'm not some sort of gangster. Get all the cash that I want by Wednesday and put it in the fire hydrant in front of your house. Listen to me, unless you want to ruin everything for everybody else, don't fuck up everyone else's life. Just fuck up your own. Audio files, videos, photos, I have it all. Your whole place, your whole business, it's going down. The blackmailer starts listing off a little bit of what they know, just a little taste of what's about to come. And this has been redacted from the reports. Redacted, abuse of power. Redacted, drug trafficking. Redacted, drugs. Each one of those redacted names were high-powered people and or celebrities. The last one on that list was an A-list actor in South Korea, internationally acclaimed by playing the rich father from Oscar-winning film Family Man, Lee sung -gyun. The blackmailer texted Nami, Tomorrow, I'm gonna start with Lee, so be careful. If you ever see your husband has a strange charge on his card every Friday night for a bakery that you've never even been to before and you guys are in South Korea, you might want to look into that. There are establishments called room salons and they can fake receipts to look like bakery receipts, snack shop receipts, or other small business receipts. But in reality, they're just hostess bars. And Nami was a madam at one of these entertainment establishments. So in Japan, they're hostess bars. In Korea, they're kind of called room salons. There's a little bit of overlap. There's a lot of similarity, but there's some differing points. They're like fancy karaoke bars in Korea with private rooms. So the sole purpose is entertaining men. They remind me, again, quite a bit of the Japanese hostess clubs in the sense that you walk in, you get escorted into a private room. Most rooms have the karaoke set up so you can sing or you can pick hostesses to sing and spend time with you. And a big part of it is de-stressing from this corporate world while you're having someone tending to you and boosting your ego. But 
at first i was like how is it that this woman i don't remember her name but the one that works at the bar how does she have dirt on these people and how does like because i was like is she a sesang like that was my initial thing like you know going into this because what kind of business like how is she getting private information like photos it seems and things like that but now the dots are connecting because if it's like a high like a fancy place like this then they probably get a lot of celebrity clients or whatever you know like in these private rooms that part is the same but korean room salons have a few slight differences like the fact that they have a pretty most of them have a pretty strict no phones rule in the rooms oh no phones which makes everything feel just a bit more intimate just a bit more private and Korean room salons, they focus heavily on exclusivity and status symbols. Some clubs, they won't even let you in. You walk in, you're like, I've got $10,000 that I want to blow right now. They're like, sorry, sir, you're not a member. So you can't. And in Korea, if you ever hear something called Ita and Ita, this is what they're referring to. There's two tiers to room salons. Ita is when you're on the premises, when you're in the club or in the room salon. You can usually flirt, get that emotional connection. Sometimes you could probably fondle the room salon girls, depending on the room salon, right? Depending on the establishment. And then there's something called Ita, which is level two, second tier. This means that after the room salon date, you go out, usually off the premises, and you go full intimacy. These room salons, they can get really pricey. If you're going to go to a really nice, luxurious one in the center of Gangnam, you can expect to pay around $500 to $1,500 per person per night. Whoa. Yeah, it's insane. You have to pay for the room fee, then the food and the drinks. Then you have to tip the hostesses. And then there's different leagues of salons. There's a ranking system for the girls at these types of clubs. So you've got the Puchangdong style. Now, this style is very overtly style. Sometimes the girls you walk in, they're just wearing their undergarments. Then you have the club girls. They're a bit more clothed than just their undergarments, but it's like the next tier up. Then you get higher up. Then you have the 15%. This means 15% of the top prettiest girls in room salons. They call it like a 15% club, wow. which means you have a certain league of aesthetics in the girls mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Very attractive. They probably will not tolerate touching inside of the store. Then you have the TPs, the 10 pro, which means 10%. 10 pro, yeah. So girls, they look like celebrities. They're usually very educated. And if you're filthy rich, you could even sponsor one of the girls to be like, I don't know, your girlfriend, your side girlfriend. That's now, side note, insane. it does seem like a few celebrities have been seen frequenting these room salons. And I know it's a really controversial topic, but some netizens say that there might be a reason why celebrities might like these room salons more than the average civilian. The no phones rule, that might ease some of their anxiety of always feeling like they're going to be filmed by other people when they're in establishments, that other parties, not even in the room that they're in, are filming them. Like, they're just trying to have fun, right? And perhaps to some of the older generations of celebrities, it's purely just habit. Apparently back then, if you wanted to land a role in a movie, you would have to shake hands with the director in a room salon. It was so prevalent that when a new up-and-coming director came out and started his own production company, he was this close to naming it NRS. What's that? No room salons. Because he hated it so much. Mm. He was like, this is a part of the industry that I wish would just die off. I mm. hate it. Like, that's how strong and prevalent it was. That's so crazy. It is very deep-rooted in the... The celebrity culture. Yeah, okay. Like, I think it starts when you don't really have a choice. You just have to go. Mm -hmm. And the one in question today is dubbed a 1% room salon in Gangnam, meaning they only offer memberships. You cannot step in there and book a private room unless you're a member, even if you have the money, which adds to the exclusivity and the discretion of the business, only the top 1% can afford this room salon. And it's speculated that a few hours in this type of club with three to four people in a private room, that's about six to $8,000. And because of how expensive the barrier of entry is, less people would go, and it might honestly make a great place for celebrities to feel like they're getting away. I'm not recommending it, I'm not saying that they should, but I can maybe kind of see why. The barrier for entry is so high. Maybe it feels like it's more secretive and not many people are going to out you and talk about. And I mean, in a society like SK, I mean, if you can have this level of privacy, of course, you're going to take that. And honestly, you know, do what you want to do. 
you know like if that's your thing fine and i i understand it i get it because in such a like highly judgmental society if you can have some privacy just to have a little fun then i get it i get it and post and like little sneaky pictures of you online and you can finally just have some fun mm. nami runs one of those a one percent club in Gangnam. She but runs there's a it? give and take in place for room salon madams and their high profile customer the plot just thickened she runs it how did she make money to run a salon she was in jail wait was she the one that was in jail for drugs she had money stashed away what's tea so i don't want to say this clientele because that makes it sound like they're buying intimacy right that's not what i'm insinuating at all but just you know customers pat patrons of an establishment Ugh. discretion you get paid to not talk about what you see and once that trust is broken nobody's gonna want to visit nami's business ever again and this blackmailer is going to ruin her entire career even if nami gives the blackmailer the money who's to say that they're gonna stop there what if they keep going what if they keep coming back for more money it's never gonna end ding Another message from the Noodle Telegram account comes in. Do as I say, unless you want to ruin someone else's life. I don't think you know the situation that you're in right now. If you ignore me again today, I'm going to reach out to your mom. Nami sent more screenshots of these conversations to SJ, her best friend. And SJ's just trying to warn Nami. Like, don't piss off the hackers. Don't. By the way, I don't remember what I said in the intro of this video that um, Lee Sung Kyun was... Um found or with drugs um but i think it was marijuana right which is insane to me especially as a jamaican like marijuana but let's continue piss off the blackmailers just figure out what exactly they know like what in your photo albums she texts don't turn them all into enemies nami Nami's hot-headed, though. She texts back, Yeah, well, I'm not gonna give them a freaking penny. Just just find out what they have on you first. Hear them out. Estre tries to comfort her best friend, Nami. I mean, even if they know you're doing drugs, they can't touch any of your celebrity friends, like Lee sung Gyun, you know? The parasite actor. How are they gonna touch him? Yeah, I guess that's true. But I had an idea. Should I just tell Lee sung Gyun, Lee, just tell him that I've been hacked and that I'm being blackmailed into giving them $500,000. <gasps> Wait, so she's about to blackmail the actor. Yeah. While being blackmailed. She's being blackmailed for $75,000 and she's going to go turn around to the parasite actor and say, hey, Lee, I need $500,000. Otherwise, people at the press are going to know that we hang out. Do you want to be seen with the madam of a room salon? That's crazy. When you have a wife and two children? Is that what you want? So Nami has this brilliant idea of playing both sides. She would lie to the blackmailer and get money from Lee. Then she would lie to Lee and say that she was going to give the money to the blackmailer. But neither of those things were going to happen. It's not even like she wants to take the 500k, give 75k to the blackmailer, and then keep the rest. Mm -hmm. She wants to keep it all. Wow. She's like, I'm just going to screw both of them because whatever. Mm. Wow. Yeah. She shares her bright idea with her best friend, SJ, and she texts, I'm just going to play Lee. Should I do this? No, you shouldn't. Because Nami, if you don't give money to the blackmailer, what happens to Lee Opa, who actually gave you the money? Mm -hmm. And Nami just responds, oh, well, he'll just be a f***ing R-word. Nami starts texting Lee sung -yun, Lee, stating that she's being blackmailed and her phone was hacked and the press is going to find out that he's basically having an affair with her, if you will. He has an actress wife that he's been with for over a decade. So much of his image in the public arena is being part of the perfect family. They're kind of the it couple. They're like a middle-aged but it couple. They're both at their prime. I mean, they share two beautiful children together. But now, now the blackmailer knows that Lee, the perfect family man, has been spending some time with Nami, the madam of a room salon, in in her private residence and for that information nami's like okay you know what opa i negotiated and i got it down from five hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand so i'm gonna need two hundred fifty thousand nami starts texting lee okay opa i have to make a choice now first things first opa you need to live even if something happens to me you have to live that's why i'm telling you all these things about what's going on when it would be better for me if i don't tell you 
I asked around and there's a lot of people who have lost everything because they didn't comply with these types of threats from blackmailers. If we ignore this person and they go to the media about this, you and me, we're all done for. Like not saying this relationship is done for, but she's insinuating our lives, our careers are done for. Just trust me this once and comply with the demands of- It's so crazy because if their relationship dynamic is true, it means that he would have trusted her to be, you know, telling him the truth and uh, kind of dealing with the situation on his behalf you know <laughs> which even though whatever they were doing clearly is wrong it's very unfortunate that this is where it all started because of greed and money Two hundred fifty thousand wow. dollars, and i will make sure nothing incriminating about you gets out i'm going to turn myself in today for questioning because they're saying that they're going to go to the police about my drug reports do you think that they're going to run forensics on my phone nami continues trying to get two hundred fifty thousand dollars out of lee also those people will not come back once we give them the two hundred fifty thousand dollars they told me that they have no reason to come back and ask for more money but right now, if I ignore them and you ignore them, I mean, it could go to the press. Then at that point, both of our lives would be over. And like, I mean, just trust me. I'm going to take care of this situation so cleanly. Just trust me. Nami tries to soften the situation by saying things like, Sai, the world really has gone crazy these days. Cry face. Don't worry too much, though. Lee texts back, okay. She texts, I'll call you later during the day. Life is so hard. Are you available to talk during the day? I'll call you later. Lee gets her the money, $250,000 in cash, but he was very clearly hesitant. You can tell from the text messages. He doesn't know if this is the route that he wants to take. So he's not like, oh yeah, give, take the money. We got to make sure this never gets out. He's just kind of like confused and he doesn't understand really what's the best choice at that moment. It's alleged that Lee had to go to a close friend of his, Mr. Kim, who also knows Nami, to get a loan from him for the money. Because Lee's wife has access to their bank accounts, and if a quarter million dollars just goes missing, I mean, it's going to be a big deal. The cash gets delivered to Nami, who promises Lee that she's going to give it to the blackmailer, who will then shut up about the whole thing and they'll be over it. But instead, Nami takes the money and goes on the run. She stops responding to everyone. She ghosts everyone. The blackmailer, Lee, even SJ, her best friend, she ghosts them all for $250,000. And so now... The blackmailer is pissed. And the blackmailer is coming after SJ, sending messages. Nedem Tin is reaching out to SJ on Telegram, Nami's best friend, threatening to ruin SJ's life unless you can get your best friend Nami to come back with my money. SJ starts sending desperate messages to Nami. Where are you, Nami? This is insane. You can't do this to me. I'm never going to see you again. Don't ever talk to me ever again if this is how you're going to be. Don't even reach out. Nami finally responds. I'll call you soon. Call me before noon today. Noon comes in passes. This simple trick for hair regeneration. Then passes. SJ texts again. Are you calling me soon, Nami? Please help me understand because if this is what I think it is, I will forever disappear from your life. I think the cops are trying to come to my house. I have to verify it's the cops, but I don't know. I don't know. So please, Nenen Tim keeps contacting me. If they reach out to me one more time, I'm going to report them to the police. Don't try to get me to understand your side then. Do it now. If not, I never want to see you again, ever. Nami finally responds. Stop contacting my friends and acquaintances asking where I am. And I'm sorry. I wronged you in all of this, okay? I'm sorry. Because now it's on SJ. Now the pressure's on SJ. Get me my money. So she really just... Nami took 250k and that's Dead, it? Yeah. That's, that's her exit? Yeah. What? SJ texts her. Yeah, well, that is don't crazy. worry. I will have no reason to ever reach out to you again. Nami says, let me just clean this up, okay? Let me clean up the mess, and then I'll reach out to you. Don't forget to eat. Like, it's like a, don't forget to, like, don't skip meals. It's a very enduring term, which is mm -hmm. bizarre. In the that, exactly very bizarre, because I'm just like, after all of that. Moment. But how is SJ just going to wait for Nami to clean this mess up when SJ's life is on the line, too? SJ and a man by the name of Samuel walk into the Incheon Police Department with 30 pieces of black hair and a clear baggie and a very bizarre story. I'd like to report a drug crime. 
Samuel, the man that's accompanying SJ, tells the police that his girlfriend got a job at a room salon and the manager there, the madam, if you will, got her intentionally hooked on drugs. He said that he did absolutely everything to get her off these drugs, but she just wouldn't quit. So he suspected the madam is keeping her addicted for the purpose of the business. Because he can't convince his own girlfriend to get off the drugs, he decided to go to the source of the drugs. He goes to the madam of the business and tells her, hey, if you don't quit supplying my girlfriend with drugs, I'm going to report you to the police. He was so shocked because she just sat there and said, how much money do you want? That was not what he was after. He doesn't want money. He just wants his girlfriend to be safe. And the police are like, okay, kind of a wild story. So what is SJ doing here? SJ hands over the bag of hairs. This is Nami's best friend. She hands over screenshots of text messages. The woman that got Samuel's girlfriend hooked on drugs is my best friend, Nami. She's the madam of a very famous room salon, and she provides drugs for celebrities. SJ was so annoyed at Nami for leaving her like that. Mm -hmm. But also, SJ was so mad at Nami, mainly for not giving her her share. All SJ wanted was $75,000, but Nami got $250,000 and left? Now what? All that work creating a blackmail account? I mean, it can't go to waste, right? SJ did it all? SJ is the original blackmailer. I'm too stunned to speak. Bitch. Oh my God. What? Yeah, because Nami would tell her all these wild stories and send her pictures of all the celebrities that she would meet at her room salon. And now SJ's like, oh, you know what? I need some money, so I'm going to blackmail my best friend. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. And Nami has no idea. No. She's going to find out, but as of right now, no. She thinks it's talent. <laughs> but they're dope, both so f***ed up, too. The level of evilness just keep on going. Yeah. Like one crime, they follow up Money. with another, with something even worse and worse and worse. It's like they're willing to commit the crimes, but they're also willing to do it to the people that they're supposed to love the most and like be the closest to. It's really yeah. bizarre. They have no moral standing, and a lot of netizens argue which one is worse between the two. It's really hard to decide because it's just both so uniquely evil. Mm -hmm. It's just so bizarre. So now after reporting Nami, SJ texts Mr. Kim. Again, this is the Parasite actor's close friend, the one that also knows Nami. And he's also the one that loaned the cash. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Kim. Yes. So SJ contacted Mr. Mr. Yes. Kim. Yes. Mr. Kim already gave $250,000 to Nami. Yes. SJ reaches out to him, trying to get more money out of him because Nami ran away. SJ basically reaches out and is like, hi, I'm the original blackmailer. Nami took the freaking money and ran, so I'm going to need you guys to give me my cut. Pay me my money. I never got paid, so the blackmail threats are still active. But Mr. Kim just responds to Nenem Din. There's no response from our side because... But this is too late at this point because she has officially reported a crime to the police and if it's drug related it's gonna be a big deal because it's sk and we know drugs and sk don't go together right drugs is a very big deal there which is kind of crazy to me sometimes because we've seen the cases about like you know sa and all of those things especially when it's done to women right and how that is treated, but drugs? Let it be drugs. This? But essay? Giving more money? Crazy. I mean, it seems like this side has given up. Like, we've given up. Do you really think that we will believe that this will ever end? Even if you say this is it and that Nami took the rest of the money and ran. Honestly... I don't know. We don't know what to believe. And I'm just in the middle trying to keep this under wraps. I even sent my own money too. Jeez, I mean, I think the best way to resolve all of this is if we all meet up together, sign some sort of contract. Otherwise, no deal with more money. So he's like, we need to get together and sign some documents if you want any cash at all. Not like a document saying... Listen, Dispatch always got the tea. And you know what's crazy? Let me not say it, I'm not trying to get sued, but I feel like sometimes dispatch is like, listen, they be they might be doing some of the same things like, pay me my money, I'll keep my mouth closed. <laughs> we'll never bring dispatch. this up, like you are bound by, I don't know, an NDA or something. I feel like dispatch has the most tea 
on um K celebrities? Girl. Thing, because this is just crazy. You can't just keep asking us for more money. Mr. Kim goes, or we can just go the legal route because this is extortion. Honestly, I don't get yeah. any of this. Even with that amount of money, 250K, NAMI will last maybe five years. So why are we even doing stuff like this right now? But SJ is very desperate. She keeps messaging him, almost pitching herself like she's on Shark Tank. Sir, let's do the original agreed upon deal of $75,000. I really need the money and you can see if I will ever threaten you guys ever again, I will disappear with the money. I will stop looking for Nami. If this ever gets out to the world, I will take full responsibility for it because there's really no need for that to get everybody involved. I just really need the money tomorrow, right away. Wait, is she... Telling them that she was the original blackmailer? Yeah, but mm -hmm. she's not saying she's SJ. She's messaging them through Nen and Thim, oh, the noodle account. I gotcha. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, the messages are written really polite. It's actually kind of odd. She's blackmailing them, but it sounds more like she's a distant relative asking for a loan. But when Mr. Kim doesn't budge and give her what she wants, she fully lashes out. She texts, first of all, I didn't know Nami was going to take the money and run. I didn't know that she was going to eat all the money and fucking explode. So, like, is that really my fault? Mr. Kim says... Regardless, I'll have to pass on this deal. Okay, fine. Then I'll continue bothering people around you guys. Besides, today, I will give you a deal. Remember how I was asking for $150,000? Today, let's make it $40,000. How about that? You should probably take the deal with this kind of cut. Try standing in my shoes for once, sir. Mr. Kim makes a deal. And the blackmailer tells him that he will send an assistant to grab the money. That assistant is SJ. Yeah. So she texts him on her. Well, she's not that smart. Well, noodle account. I'm going to send my assistant to grab the cash from you in the parking lot. And guess who shows up? SJ. What? But Mr. Kim is like, oh, that's probably just the assistant for the blackmailer. Oh, he doesn't know SJ. No. Oh. Yeah. It's like a whole thing. Ultimately, SJ gets $40,000 in cash in the parking lot of a grilled eel restaurant in Gangnam. And just to recap, SJ is the original noodle blackmailer. Mm -hmm. She was texting Nami about the blackmail threats like she has no idea what's going on. So she's Nami's blackmailer and her best friend giving her advice on mm -hmm. what to do with the blackmailer. Yeah. That's why she's saying like, no, don't play Lee. Like, don't do that. Don't run off with the money. Don't make enemies. Just see what they want. Wow. She ends up getting $40,000 from Lee. Nami, the madam of the business, ends up getting blackmailed, but plays Lee and runs off with $250,000. And it takes about three to four weeks to be issued a passport. Nami was a few days in when she was caught by the police. Police had records that she applied for a passport and a visa planning to flee the country. But flower snakes are known not to travel that fast. That's what people call Nami, a flower snake, a kotem. That's what we call them. Okay, so a flower snake is the Korean version of a gold digger, but it's actually a lot yeah. more scathing than a gold digger. Gold digger is like, okay, I don't know how offended I'd be if I was called a gold digger, but a flower snake, it's such a ruthless term. It's mm. a woman who waits in the gardens, like a little snake near all the beautiful flowers, just waiting for someone close to come by. They slither towards their next victim, seduce them, and then ask them for money in return for their silence. So it's not even someone that wants to date someone with money. It's more so, I'm going to literally sleep with that person, someone that I know shouldn't be sleeping with me, whether it's a married man, a company executive, someone that would be in trouble if the world found out that they slept with me. And immediately afterwards, I'm going to ask them for money in return for my silence. I see. It's like blackmailing. They're literally blackmailers. Wow, this is insane. I used to think that having dogs in the house would help me sleep better at night. Like, I was not expecting this to go where it went. That was before I realized that my dog, Tiger, or at least one of them, does not have a survival instinct bone in his body. A burglar could be knocking on my windows and Tiger would not bat an eye. He would literally think, if intruder, why not intruder shape? I mean, I adore both of my dogs. I would never trade them for the world. But I also want my home to be safe for my family, including my dogs who are clearly not bred for survival. That is why my home is equipped with Simply Safe Home Security. It's an advanced system that protects every- I love how Stephanie is throwing her dogs under the bus for this ad like her dogs need to see this ad and just know what she thinks of them <laughs> but honestly like going into this i was not expecting the story to take this massive turn you know 
like i i don't even remember if i had seen anything about the blackmailing initially when i found out about the case and then the fact that he passed but i do know it was something about you know usage of the rugs and i think i saw that it was you know so yeah i think that's what i saw and the fact and if it is that it was this like for all of this to be coming from the use of trees is insane to me very sad and insane because this is the same trees that is being used in medicines to treat people it's the same tree that people are taking every night like myself to go to sleep to bed like that is insane to me but anyways let's continue October 18th, 2023, the day after SJ reported her, Nami was arrested for suspicion of drug use in her room salon. She was under suspicion of using Phylophon, which it's known as Satan's phlegm or Satan's mucus Ew. in South Korea. It's crystal meth. Side note, this very specific kind was created in Japan during World War II to give soldiers to make them more stimulated during the war so that they could fight harder and longer. So there's that. It's become a huge recreational drug issue in East Asia now. So Nami was arrested, brought in to be questioned. She's drug tested. It comes back positive for psychotropic substances. But that's a huge range. I'm just going to be honest with you. That could include caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, and even oh, certain okay. pain meds. But also heroin, LSD, cocaine, and crystal meth. So, so why there's that. that. At this point, the I police see, have testimonies from two people that Nami is not only doing drugs, but selling drugs. So from SJ and Samuel. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, she's selling drugs. She's doing drugs. And South Korea is a country that's super strict on drugs. Yeah. So Nami is a slam dunk case, right? For the police. But nothing is impressive about catching a flower snake. You don't get a pat on the back for catching a flower snake. You don't get an award. You don't get a promotion for catching a flower snake, especially if that flower snake has six prior drug convictions. What's so great about the seventh drug conviction? If anything, it's almost insulting. A seventh time, really? You couldn't catch her again, like the seventh time? The police didn't want a flower snake. They wanted to take down a napping alligator in the grass. And the only thing is, you're more likely to be killed from a snake than an alligator, statistically. October 19th, 2023, just three hours after Nami's very first interrogation finishes, an exclusive article is published online about an unnamed gigantic A-list actor going by the name of Mr. L that is now part of a huge drug investigation. It's very cryptic. I mean, so cryptic to the point of being uninteresting. Even if we can guess Mr. L stands for Mr. Lee. It could be Mr. Lim. It could even be Mr. Park. Who's to say that the L is the first letter of the actor's surname? Mm -hmm. there, that's still a huge population of people to go through. The last name Lee in South Korea is the second most popular after Kim. Kim. About 15% of the population share the last name Lee. Yeah. So who's going to know who this actor is? But very quickly, almost suspiciously quickly, rumors start spreading online that it's Lee sung -yun. Everyone's confused. How? How would anyone know that it's him? Especially given the circumstances. Lee sung -yun is not even someone that the general public would assume would do drugs. He's 48. He's got a wife, respected actress of a wife, two children. He doesn't really fit this young club scene. The man just golfs. When he goes on to variety shows, reality shows, all he talks about is his love for his kids and golf. Like he's obsessed with golf. The reporter would eventually come out to state that the police gave them the name just exposed the fact that Lee was involved in an open drug investigation. And the media ran with it. They dropped article after article after article that Lee was accused of cheating on his wife at a room salon and taking drugs with the girls there. And everybody lost their freaking minds. They went genuinely crazy. Truly the press, they're having a field day. They're calling this the mini Burning Sun scandal. Because, because it had two huge. of the biggest names in the Korean entertainment industry attached to it. Parasite actor Lee sung -yun and G-Dragon of Big Bang. Originally, G-Dragon would be the bigger focus of the media. People were go Right, because I remembered this aspect as well. But I wasn't able to connect the dots. But I remember seeing this in the media a lot. But I think 
I guess Stephanie will talk about it, but I think they said that after investigation, they found nothing on him. I think Lee was the only one that they had like proper evidence on. Going in and overanalyzing every single video of G Dragon, they were looking for any strange body movements, unfocused eyes, slurred speech, anything that could indicate that he was a drug user. People were saying, oh, well, Top from Big Bang was busted for weed usage. Sung Lee from Burning Sun, right? And then now, now G Dragon? We knew it. We knew it all along. There's a video of G-Dragon at the airport taken by paparazzi that became one of the trending videos associated with this case. It shows him walking through the airport while paparazzi follow him around taking pictures and videos, and he can't seem to stay still. He's touching his face, he's touching his hair, re readjusting his clothing, he's stretching, which, side note, I saw the video, and I do think that he strikes me as maybe a little bit more active with his movements than... I would normally expect anxious. walking through the airport, but there's so much context to this. First of all, we don't know if he has any sort of health condition that could lead to something like that. But also, mm -hmm. even if he doesn't, he's a celebrity in South Korea. His every move, his every look, facial expression, breath is going to get analyzed and dissected regardless yeah. of a drug scandal or not. And as he's walking through the airport with paparazzi, like it's just so awkward. Exactly. Nobody's really talking to him. They're just like following him around. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I would maybe move around and fidget and try to change. I would feel insecure. I would yeah, constantly yeah. fix my hair. Maybe I have a scratch and then I would try to adjust my clothing because they're taking pictures and I know these pictures are going to be front page somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? I mean, I can't imagine that's a pleasant, non-anxious, inducing, a soothing experience. But the comments started getting flooded after G-Dragon was revealed to be part of the Room Salon drug investigation. They were ruthless netizens wrote ha so it's true they say addicts pretend to stretch because they can't keep their bodies still i'd be more surprised if he wasn't on drugs this guy's a drug addict look at him shaking like a dog let's pretend we're all surprised you guys he really paved the way for criminals he's the king of the drugs he really looks like the type to do crap anyway you know i really <laughs> Sorry to all my followers that are from SK. I don't mean to be mean, but I just wish this energy was put into the cases that had to do with women when they get essayed. Because drugs is the person's business. If they want to do that, that's their goddamn business. If you want to be addicted, and get messed up you know mess up your life or whatever because of that usage that's your business why do you care right but when women are essayed where's this energy that's something that cannot be controlled I just I don't I don't get it I don't get it like who cares okay he's doing the hard D okay why do I care G Dragon came out Why with a statement care? and basically begged the police to test him. He stated to the public that he would be voluntarily submitting his own urine, hair, fingernail, and toenail samples to be tested for drug usage. This was kind of a pivotal moment in the Korean entertainment industry. A lot of netizens have stated this is this is going to change probably society's perception of these investigations because G-Dragon shows up at the police station with press waiting for him outside the station. This is his very first interrogation. Voluntary. He's going to submit all of his samples. They're just the press. They're foaming at the mouth to get him to do something, say something, get arrested, anything. G-Dragon shows up in a full suit, black glasses, and he does not bow to the press, which is Period. a huge thing for Korean celebrities. Mm -hmm. If you do not bow to the press, no respect. That means you think that you're God or something. How dare you? These are the people that made you famous. But these are also the people that are preying on your downfall for a story so that they can say that they wrote the story about this person doing this and they can have all the accolades because they like to bully people like bullying why do you like to why do y'all like to bully people so much is it because life is so boring that you need some form of entertainment to belittle people 
for like to make your lives feel better like what is what is this this was significant this was him showing the press that he was not going to get bullied by them Period. he does not bow and before he goes in to be questioned mind you i'm not a g dragon fan i don't even listen to his music okay but period <laughs> by the police g dragon answers a few questions from the press they ask why are you making a voluntary appearance for police questioning he looks at them and he does this between every single question he looks at them like they're not even the same species he looks at them like they're insane they're unhinged like why did you just ask me that he says i'll know when i get inside do you admit to charges that you've used drugs I have not committed any crime regarding drugs. I'm appearing for questioning to clarify all allegations made. It's best to answer any questions authorities may have as quickly as possible. So I, I should probably expression. not prolong these conversations right now. You've and they are asking questions without proof. Of, like, what kind of media training do they do in SK? Because how are you going to... They're basically bullying him into... Like, they're literally bullying him into a corner because you're asking questions without even having, like, a reason to ask the questions that you're asking. Because there's no proof that he has done what the media is saying that he's done. But you're trying to get him to admit to something that has no proof. And he's literally there to do a drug test. I keep saying that word and I'm trying not to say it because I don't want YouTube to... <laughs> ah, but you get what I'm saying? Like... They're such big bad boys. Checked at the charges against you. Does that mean you think the investigation by the police is unfounded? Even the press question here is so bizarre. It's like they want him to badmouth the police outside the police station and put himself in a situation where the police are going to want to ruin his life even more. Exactly. G-Dragon looks more bored than anything. And he just states, everything will come to light in due course. Then the press start hinting at the idea that G-Dragon dyed his hair to throw off the hair drug test results. When did you dye your hair? And do you have hair loss problems? Huh? I did not do anything like that. Did you ever frequent the entertainment establishment that's been mentioned? We'll have to see about that. Do you know the establishment's manager or the doctor who's been accused of providing the drugs? No. Can I go now? <laughs> and do you want to say something to your fans? Which this is the absolute worst time to bring something like this up. I mean, it's just kind right. of gross. What do you what do you want him to say? Mm -hmm. He wants to prove that he's not guilty by going in there. And this is a police investigation. Like, what do you mean? Do you want to say something to your fans right now? G Dragon literally takes like a full minute to look at him like he's out of his mind. And he starts smirking and he's just flabbergasted. And he says, don't worry too much. Can I go now? You know what this is reminding me of? I was watching J and J's um reaction to Augustine's song Snooze, right? When they were going into the deep dive of the song. And I'll never forget like one of the snooze lyrics that Yumi has is, you know, looking down on uh, never look down on your juniors. Or I never look down on people in general because and don't laugh at, at people's misfortune because you never know when it's gonna be you. And it's such a important like lesson to learn, especially being a celebrity or idol or whatever in SK, because you slip, you slide in that country. Like they are so unforgiving for it's the littlest things. And I'm I'm not even trying to be like, because I'm an outsider and I understand culture and like being in a certain society. And if you live in a certain society, you react to certain things differently. That is understood. But as a country, they are so unforgiving for some of the littlest things. And I don't, it's just insane to me. Wow. Side note, his body movements are exactly the same here as when he was at the airport. Once G-Dragon gets out of police questioning, he was in there for four hours. Even more press is waiting for him. He stops to answer questions, and not necessarily because he wants to, but more so as a formality. But the press ask him some very strange things. One of them asks, you claimed innocence before you went in there. Do you still stick by that stance? What? He responds, wouldn't it be wrong if I changed my position? Why what was the result of the urine test? Guilty? It came out negative. From now on, I hope the authorities will carry out an accurate and swift probe that will resolve this matter. Period. Are you willing to accept future summons by the police to be questioned if they ask you to come? Yes. What is he going to say? If they call no? me, I would have to come, no? Bro, what kind of question is that? <laughs> yeah. It's almost like 
just tell us you did it. It's almost yeah, like that yeah. kind of tone. Like, what are you talking about? Just tell us you'll never. And you know, I know they're profiling him so hard because he's a rapper. He has tattoos. You know, he has that bad boy image. You know, once you do all of those things, you're automatically listen to the police and you don't want to cooperate like what yeah. what he literally looks at the press and by the way i'm not saying that he's an innocent man i'm just saying the profiling like they're crazy in today's probe did the police show you any evidence related to the allegations raised against you no no they didn't i just hope no more energy is spent on unverified matters you were questioned for four hours what are the areas that the police focused on none of your goddamn business we just laughed a lot and then we ended it could you please repeat that? We just laughed. You you guys laughed. That was a joke. The fact that I'm being investigated on such a matter, uh, what can I say? The police, too, will have to make a decision based on my testimony if my words are of help to their ongoing probe or not. What I want, if possible, is just the swift announcement of the detailed drug test lab results from my hair and fingernails. What do you expect the test results to be? Oh my God. Of course, it'll come out negative. Once again, I have never administered drugs or given them to anyone. A lot of people are watching. Do you have anything else you'd like to say? He j <laughs> yes, a lot of people are watching right now. So um, I would just say there's no need to worry too much. I hope they'll trust me and wait. Thank you. That's all. I'm sorry, but I would rip my hair out. <laughs> I would rip my hair out. He does a very brief bow and heads back to his car. Oh, they got a bow? Good for them. Damn. Bye. Bye. Mm. G Dragon's test results will oh, all no. come back negative. <laughs> and he would post on Instagram, which means everything will always fall back into the right pattern, almost like karma. It's used frequently in settings when someone gets accused of doing something that they didn't do. So mm. they're being attacked, but it's almost a feeling of just wait because the truth will settle in and everyone will realize what's been happening. G Dragon's black glasses that he wore during the public probe, the police probe, were a thousand dollars, limited edition, and they reportedly sold out immediately after his drug test came back negative. <laughs> According to Dispatch, so take this how you will, but according to Dispatch, G-Dragon visited Nami's room salon at least twice in 2023. It was something that she would allegedly not shut up about and was nonstop bragging about it. Allegedly, she would even sneak videos of G-Dragon while he was going to use the restroom. Not in the restroom, but like when he would walk up from the room and leave to go use the restroom, she would sneak videos and send it to her friends. She would text them things like, GD came to visit me again. But later to the police, Nami would state, every time GD went to the restroom, he would get up and use the restroom, G-Dragon would come back looking very strange. Once I was very curious as to why, so I slipped into the bathroom and I saw some very suspicious packaging there. That's why he was called in for this probe. That is so vague. So was she trying to protect Lee by putting G-Dragon onto the bus? Is that what's happening? Like, why... That's the end? That's the end. That's like why he got involved in all of this. Wh what did she see? Suspicious packaging. I don't know if that means like, like what a- what does that mean? Like you a know? tiny little clear plastic bag of white powder. I don't know what it means. It could be a- And that also makes no sense because if it is that her establishment was giving this, this substance, then he would be consuming those things in the private room. Why would he need to go into the bathroom to do that? The place is made for that, you know? Like, that's a, that's something on the menu. So he wouldn't need to go into hiding to do that. Like, what she's saying doesn't make sense. Toblerone bar packaging. I don't know. Suspicious packaging. Wow. Yeah, Her story that is so sense. vague and coming from someone with six prior convictions and affinity for blackmailing people right. for hundreds of thousands of dollars, someone that is proven to only be out for their own skin and would even exaggerate stories to their friends to appear a certain way, it feels completely unfounded and not credible. But the police would state that G-Dragon was a drug suspect from that statement. And just to clarify, these are just allegations that he would visit Nami. We don't know if he for sure did. And even if he did go, that's not against the law. What does exactly. that have to do with drugs? Exactly. But even with all of this going on, Leave there was still an article that was posted titled, Hair Removal All Over the Body. 
The article alleged G-Dragon shaved all his body hair and bleached his head hair, to which his attorney made another statement. G-Dragon has not removed his hair at all since it was reported that he was booked. He voluntarily submitted his hair, fingernails, and toenails to prove his innocence as quickly as possible. Again, all test results came back. Can these reporters that are doing these stories be, um, like, charged for defamation? Is defamation a thing in SK when it comes on to things like this? Like, are reporters um, protected? Because, baby, if I was him, I'd get my money word. I'm just Negative. saying. Even the National Forensic Service would confirm that G-Dragon did not dye or bleach his hair recently. But in this case, there is no such thing as innocent till proven guilty. It really feels like a witch It was hunt. guilty it's until proven innocent. just wanted a name to, to explode in the yeah. news. And mm -hmm. But aren't you curious as to why? January of last year, there was a huge drug bust in South Korea. It was blasted all over the news. The police found a drug trafficking ring where a group of individuals were growing, using, and selling marijuana. The police were so proud of themselves. Officers are getting promoted left and right because of that drug bust. There were talks about how advanced the police were getting at tracking drug users, how competent they were becoming. But there's actually a secret behind this brilliant police bust. The police received a tip. That's it. So simple, right? So at first, the tip was from a woman who was begging the police for help to avoid her violent boyfriend. She told authorities that she overheard the boyfriend's plans to sell her into sex trafficking. The police are like, yeah, well, we don't really have time for that. For so Do I even need to say anything on their response to her comment about the trafficking? But I'm sure after that, she mentioned the word B-R-U-G-S. And they're like, oh, oh, why didn't you just say that first? Because that's what we care about. Well, he's your boyfriend. Second of all, you haven't been sold, have you? And third of all, we don't have proof that that's what he genuinely wants to do. Exactly. I mean, if you don't like the idea, then right? just break up with him. Yeah. Clearly, she couldn't do that, but Priority, they genuinely yeah. just could not care less. So the woman got smart, and the next time she called, she reported her boyfriend for dealing drugs. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the police are all ears. They're like, this is deplorable. We got to do something about this. How dare They're very you? interested in helping her and saving her from the big, bad, scary, drug-dealing boyfriend. Yeah. They tell her to get a pen and paper and write down the list of things they want from her. Location of marijuana growing. Location of purchasing of marijuana. Location of purchasing methamphetamines. Purchasing of methamphetamines from who? Question mark. Eyewitness testimony. Sold to who and at which locations? Question mark. Mm -hmm. Not only were they just investigating a drug bust rather than her whole situation with the boyfriend, they wanted her to do the job for them. Do all the investigating. They're like, bring all that to us and then we'll look into it. Ooh, so exciting. Whenever she brought up the sex crimes, they just said, well, when you catch the dog, everything comes together. Yeah. Like, let's just catch him and then, you know. She put her life in danger to yeah. give the police all the evidence they wanted. But even then, they waited a full month to arrest her boyfriend. She was terrified for that full month, just waiting for him to be taken in so that she wouldn't be caught snitching on him. Eventually, her boyfriend gets arrested. Their front page pieces of the police's stellar jobs on the drug bust, shining new promotions are handed down to the officers. But they're not even done. Some of the officers would bring the girl back in, asking her, did you sleep with any celebrities? Because he was trying to, like, sell you to trafficking. So, like, did you sleep with any celebrities? They just wanted a celebrity attached to it. Because it would make it even bigger. And it all comes down to war. Violence against women is nothing. Violence against children is nothing. Police don't get a cookie for that. But they do get a cookie for winning the battles in this war against drugs. President Yoon waged war on drugs and told the police, at some point, drugs are not only devastating the health and spirit of the people of South Korea, but also destroying the dreams and hopes of the youth due to the neglect. Unaliving is not important, right? We are not going to focus on, not that by trying to play me up, but unaliving is not important. We're not going to focus on, you know, the rigid system of education and you know, how this affects our youth and mental health. That indeed, my guy, is not important. What is important is the use of substances. Mental health, the harming of women and children, that is not important. But what is important is substance usage.
You can unalive all you want because of the pressures of society. But don't you dare do that stuff. from government authorities. The government will join all forces to win the war on drugs that has eaten away our entire country. This is the current president. Yeah. Right? He's like really controversial, by the way. Now, side note, I don't think South Korea's drug usage is that bad compared to a lot of the other countries because of um, their geographical location. It's actually very hard to smuggle drugs into South Korea. They're strictly a drug. And that's my thing, too. If they have such a big issue with it, it means also that access to it is not easy, right? So the fact that it's... <laughs> Oh, my God. Ban country, meaning consuming any drugs without a legitimate medical reason is illegal. Even if you're a Korean citizen, you go to California where weed is legal. You smoke weed. You come back to Incheon Airport. They can drug test you for weed. If it's proven that you smoked weed in California where it's legal, but you're a Korean citizen, you're going to get arrested. That you're going to face insane. prison time as if you smoked weed in South Korea. That is crazy. So to incentivize. I've always thought about that, you know, because I'm like, if you leave the country and do something that's legal in another country, like. If you come here to Jamaica and you, you know, some, some, some trees and you go back, it's a problem. If you go to Thailand and smoke some and go, what? the quote war on drugs president yoon's administration stated that they would prepare large-scale rewards, including special promotions for those who show achievements in excellent cases against drugs. To simplify, the police are almost dangerously incentivized to focus on drug charges and that's it. And they know that any big drug scandal or news will be heavily watched, heavily monitored, not just by their boss, but their boss's 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 boss, the one that has the ability to give you a life-changing promotion with a giant payday. It will be watched by the president of South Korea. There's a speculation that the police felt a lot of pressure now. They bit down on the cake way too early, and now everyone in the nation is staring at them with icing all over their face, and it's too late to back out now. It's way too embarrassing. You were talking about G-Dragon was yeah. name is clear. Now they're like, what do we do now? Yeah, like this is embarrassing. Like we look stupid. And the way that G-Dragon handled the press conferences, it's like he's basically showing the cops they're that they're mocking. stupid. Yeah, he's mocking. And them. also just for context, for mm -hmm. anyone who doesn't follow K-pop, G-Dragon is probably one of the biggest name in the K-pop industry yeah he was mm -hmm. one of like the i people like call him gen like the ogs two, right? yeah gen 2 so it's like an yeah. og you know still one of the biggest name in the country so yeah. like but his name associated with this frontline news like yeah. it's crazy now their investigation relied heavily on testimony and there was zero evidence to back it up so what happened to g dragon was humiliating for the police so it's likely that they wanted to make sure that lee doesn't get away in nami's 17 interrogations so Nami, the madam, would be interrogated 17 times by the police. Lee's name was mentioned 260 times. Nami would state confidently that Lee did drugs in her house. How did he administer the drugs? Oh, I have a silver pipe in my house for smoking weed. When the police searched her house, they can't find the pipe anywhere. But it doesn't matter because as long as Nami is saying it happened, the police believe it happened. According to Nami, based off of no proof, no evidence. The same person that said she dragon did what? Lee would come over to her house, smoke marijuana and take ketamine and take all these other drugs, like hard drugs. I mean, it got to the point where Nami's third interrogation by the police, she couldn't even pinpoint exactly when Lee did the drugs, allegedly. So the police start helping her, allegedly. If Nami would list a date that didn't make sense, the police would say something along the lines of, well, on that day, that wouldn't have worked because he had a so-and-so appearance, like he was doing a press tour. So that couldn't have been then. It's most likely more so around these dates, right? Or in another time, they told Nami, well, Lee was on a business trip to the U.S. from August 29th to September 7th. So tell us about the day that you guys did drugs between August 19th and August 29th. Mm -hmm. If I didn't know any better, I would think they're feeding her these dates. Coursing. Ultimately, Nami was unable to provide the police with a set time, date, or location of Lee doing drugs. It's like they just happened in a void. How can you be a witness testimony when you don't remember the location, time, or date where anything happened? Yeah, that's not evidence, right? Yeah, that's not, that's, even if you remember, that's circumstantial. Yeah. It's just like, you could say whatever you want, honestly. Yeah, you had a dream. Yeah. Oh my God. 
no matter how hard I try to be more health conscious, it just always feels very overwhelming. Between all the different podcasts and books and all these other sources, there is so much conflicting information. And the worst part is, I feel like there's always a diet or a workout. So I knew that, like, um, or I mentioned earlier that I did think that a part of this is what I saw with um, trees. The use of trees. They're going to say trees. I know Stephanie's saying the word, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> but um, that's what I remember seeing, right? Because I know initially when, you know, Stephanie started going through this story and how all the pieces like come together, she mentioned other substances. So I thought, okay, maybe there was more to the story, but now it seems like, okay, the only evidence they had was the usage of, you know, trees in her house without any evidence, the same way she had evidence that G-Dragon did the same thing. And this is how shit starts to go downhill with Lee. Because not only is he going to have problems at home with his wife, because there still is some truth in the matter, clearly, of what is happening, you know, with the, the, um, the cheating, etc. You know, then you add something as big as the use of substances in sk which is like the worst thing you could ever do right and she's probably like thinking too like how can i try to bring somebody down with me because at the end of the day you know she's gonna get locked up again at the end of the day she's gonna get locked up because she still is attached to the whole substance um usage thing with her club so she's going down, she needs someone to go down with her. And the police is trying to get somebody to go down with her too because they want a celebrity name, as Stephanie said. 24th, 2023, the police stated that Lee was under suspicion of inhaling and administering marijuana and other types of drugs several times. They released this to the public. Wow. So what are the public thinking? They're not thinking, oh, I bet Nami doesn't even know a set time, location, and date where this happened. They're thinking, oh, he probably, he they, it, yeah. they got some stuff against him. Yeah, because he the police released that like yeah credible yeah. you think they're credible, but they're not right? gonna bring him in for questioning this is all before they even talk to lee and get his side of the story they announce this and they state that their plan is to secure the cell phone data and conduct forensic work before they actually summon lee for an interrogation and they're doing all this and lee is finding out then with the public that this is happening at the same time apparently when you cancel someone in korea they call it narak it almost translates to sending someone to hell, like sending them off. It's like they're standing on the edge of a cliff and it's just the black abyss and then someone just pushes them. You're just sending them off. Lee's agency, Hodu and You Entertainment, released a statement soon after the news broke. They stated, and this has been edited for length, first, we would like to deeply apologize for causing any concern through the reports about Lee sung -yun. We are currently verifying the exact facts regarding the allegations raised against the actor Lee. We intend to faithfully participate in any future investigations, including submitting cell phones for analysis. We have not yet been contacted by the police. However, actor Lee has received continuous blackmail threats from an unnamed woman, Miss A, a person related to the incident. Lee has filed a complaint with the investigative agency. We will inform you of future progress in this regard through our legal representative. We ask for your generous understanding he and his agency do respond rather quickly mm -hmm. they even state that lee is being blackmailed by someone involved in all of this the general public did not care the statement just wasn't good enough people compared lee's statement to g dragons and they just fully ripped it to shreds they did not like the fact that lee's agency did not comment directly that lee never took the drugs and that he never went to the room salons the public felt like a non-denial was basically admittance that he did all those things some comments at the time read, So who threatened you into taking drugs? Who asked you to provide an excuse to blackmail you? What kind of joke is that? You irresponsibly say, Oh, I want to enjoy the pleasure of the moment and now you regret it? Another comment reads, This statement is the worst. I use drugs, now I'm being threatened. Are you really that pitiful? Another one is just, Ugh, the end of a messy life, huh? To make matters worse, two very well-known names in the drug world in South Korea were linked to this case. Hwang Hana, who has been in prison like three times prior to this for drug usage. Hannah's a Nepo baby. Her grandfather founded Namyang Dairy Company, which is the country's third largest dairy company that specializes in like yakurutu, you know, the probiotic yogurt drinks. Hannah's dad is allegedly worth at least over $300 million. 
Hannah's a very interesting character. Her whole family is. Her family was in hot water when the dairy company made claims that their yogurt could prevent COVID. Yeah, we talked about her before, right? Yeah. Like the oh. dairy princess. And her fiance mysteriously passed. Oh, right. Yes, she was involved in a very mysterious death. And like, there's just a lot going on. But Hannah is notorious for getting caught with drugs, going to prison, coming out, and then being like, I'm never going to do it again. And then getting caught with drugs. And I would say that as of today, any association with Hannah probably isn't the best luck. And Han so was also interrogated. Han so was associated with multiple K-pop idol drug scandals. Like I said, most notably Top from Big Bang. She was also involved in YG, like the YG of YG's trial. I mean, there's a lot going on. She's basically known by netizens as the villain of the K-pop world. That's how people describe her. And just like Hannah, any association with Han so typically not great. Mm. Netizens were commenting, there's a saying, birds of a feather flock together. Another one reads, they live a careless life. The same kind of people hang out with one another. Now the public is spinning together this story of how they're all connected and creating some sort of friendly drug ring together. Lee's lawyer came out to say, the third generation Tebar and the aspiring entertainer are known to be subject to an internal investigation with Lee. But Lee does not know them. And the suspicion that Lee hung out with them at an entertainment establishment and took drugs is not true. We cannot reveal more at this time, but we will talk with the investigative agency about the allegations and cooperate well with the investigation. But nobody cared. Netizens commented on the case. His image has gone down the drain. I'm just laughing thinking about how much he tried to cover up his image so far. With this, Lee had to drop out of a TV series that he was working on called No Way Out, which there's a lot going on here, but the series name is No Way Out. And in it, a really scary criminal is freed. Lee plays a police officer that has to protect citizens from the criminal, but also keep the criminal safe from the bounty hunters that are after him. A lot of netizens saw the irony, they said, and demanded Lee be taken off the project because they could not see him as a police officer. Some netizens commented, in the future, when producing large-scale movies, the main character should undergo drug tests before proceeding. If you're honest, there's no reason you should say no to a drug test. But if you're not, and you can't get tested, you should become a drug suspect for the police. Because of Lee's case, investors are losing millions. There are even conversations about banning celebrities from being on air if they ever have a drug scandal or investigation. Meaning any show or movie that they previously worked on would not be able to air during their scandal or... That is insane because there's so many people that are working hard on this one project. One person should not affect everyone else. Like that is very selfish of the population to say because there's so many actors involved. There's so, the production crew, everyone behind the scenes. Are you saying that the, the work that they're doing should not be what? They should just forget about it? Like to make you feel better? For, for drugs? Perhaps even after, they would be banned from ever coming back to their careers, which the logic of that is insane. People who commit acts of violence or other crimes while under the influence is another thing. But people who are just caught using drugs, I've never met someone who is dependent on drugs that wasn't hurting a lot inside. So great idea. Let's just make sure that these people don't have jobs to come back to. Right? That's perfect, because that should really teach them a lesson to not do drugs. Meanwhile, Cho Doosun can open up a coffee shop in the mountains if he wants to and live next to playgrounds and be in the oh same town God, as his isn't, victim. Isn't that like some redacted? I had to doop doop. But isn't that guy like something to do with SA? I'm going to have to edit the hell out of this video because I keep saying things that I'm not supposed to say on this on this on YouTube. <laughs> but you see what I'm talking about? Like, the priorities are not prioritizing right now. That's insane, man. Like, make it make sense. Oh October 28th, 2023, Lee goes in for his first interrogation. When he leaves the police station, the press and the public are waiting for him. As he addresses the media, he gives them a deep bow as a show of a deep apology, and he bursts into tears. And he apologizes for causing such an inconvenience for everyone, but he does deny taking any drugs. He apologizes to his family and says, I apologize to them as they are suffering and going through very hard times. He continues, and above all, I would like to bow down once again to everyone who has trusted and supported me so far.
소속사를 통해서 전달했듯이 진실한 자수로 성실하게 수사에 임하겠다는 입장은 변함이 없습니다. 그리고 지금 이 순간 너무 힘든 고통을 감내하고 있는 가족들에게 미안한 마음입니다. After his first interrogation, I was gonna say like I know most of that emotion is coming from the fact that he feels like his family is now being um, looked on with like really judgmental eyes and evil eyes. His wife, his children, and it's really unfortunate that like I'm not saying he's he's an angel, right? That's not what I'm saying, but just the fact that all of this comes down to substance use and the way he's being attacked for the possibility of him using substances, you know, like that is really unfortunate. And it seemed like he was even like maybe going through some stuff because the fact that all of this came down to him ending his life tells us all we need to know and it's really heartbreaking to see him like this because i know at the front of his mind is his wife and his kids no matter what he did he knows in this moment that you know his wife and his kids are gonna be the butt of everybody's judgment because of his actions and Lee's urine test came back negative for drugs. The police would call in Lee to do another drug test. This time, instead of a urine test, they wanted to take 100 strands of his hair. They tested every section of every strand of the 100 hairs, and the results came back negative. It's a very thorough test. It stated that Lee did not use drugs for approximately 8 to 10 months. This is in like October, November. Remember the timeline? The police are like, August, right? You guys did drugs in August. It mm -hmm. would most definitely show up in his hair test. Yeah. I mean, sure, he could maybe, you could argue, maybe he did drugs 11 months ago, two years ago, but that's not evidence. He took the test in November and just going off Nami's testimony, she stated they did drugs in August. It would have absolutely shown up on the drug test. Yeah, so she's lying. This, yes. So this should be... Over. Well, yeah. And the police, honestly, I feel like they could come out and say, she lied. And we f***ed up. Yeah. So let's move on. My apologies. Let's move it. Keep it moving. The authorities wanted more drug tests from Lee. They took his leg hair and his armpit hair to be tested. His leg hair came back untestable, which it just means that a lot of Asians don't have really thick hair follicles on their legs. Mm. So there's not a lot to test for the drugs. It's just too thin of hair. Mm -hmm. But the way that it was worded in the press made it seem like, ooh, the results are iffy. Like they couldn't wow. determine. It was less of like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, because his hair wasn't enough. Or some people ran with it and said, maybe he like thinned out the hair on his legs. Maybe he shaved his legs. His armpit hair was thick enough and the results would come back negative. The same day Lee's test results all came back negative and the results would be publicized to the public. I mean, this is a huge day. This is the day that he's been waiting for because he's proved himself. He's innocent. He can look the public in the eye. He can be just like G-Dragon and take his career back. I mean, he's traumatized. There's going to be so many emotional scars. He will never get back this type of everything that's happened to him, but he can get his life back together. But none of the media outlets really reported on the negative drug test. The press up until this point had been so all over this case that if Lee so much as breathed, there'd be like a hundred new articles on it. Wow. Suddenly, they're not intrigued by the negative drug test results. Mm -mm. They're too busy talking about his newly leaked phone conversation. The same day his hair test results came back negative, the press did not report on it. They were writing about a KBS released phone call, a leaked call of a recording of Lee and the madam of the room salon, Nami, where Lee can be heard telling her, I like you a lot too, you know that, right? And she responds, I don't know, since you never express it. His negative drug results were made public, but who cares about drugs when you have an A-list married actor confessing his love to a mistress who runs a salacious establishment and you have the audio to go along with it? Side note, where do you think KBS got that audio? Just wondering, I don't know, 
But like, who would have that audio? Nami would have that audio. Who's working with the police? I'm just saying. Oh, you're saying police leaked it? A lot of netizens believe that police were involved in leaking a lot of information oh for this case. Like how they leaked Lee's name in the beginning of this so that they could get a lot of publicity and that they could make this a big blown thing and get pats on the back once they solved it. And now, once the drug tests come back negative, maybe it's time to divert attention, allegedly. This is a speculation online. Everyone went crazy because you have to remember that Lee's wife is also a famous person. They brought up old interviews of his wife talking about how she put her career on the back burner so that he could go full force into his dreams. She said, you go out and drink and do what you will. She's like talking about her husband in an interview. But I have to focus on the family to the point where sometimes I even forget my name. And this is on a show called Healing Camp, where a lot of celebrities will come and they just Mm. try to be as vulnerable as possible. So this is not her going on an interview and be like, my husband. Mm. Like they're just trying to really dig deep and have these hard conversations with each other on this show. Mm -hmm. She said, sometimes I even forget my own name. I forget that I too was an actress. That's why sometimes I think of my husband as my third son. Other times she joked that she had four sons. She has her husband, Lee, their actual two sons and their boy dog. Netizens comments were flooded with, isn't he embarrassed for his children? What was he thinking doing drugs with a woman at an adult establishment when he had his family and his career? Others hated the fact that his wife had ran for Miss Korea and she was extremely well-respected in the theater world and incredibly skilled in her profession. She was a dedicated wife and mother, yet he still cheated? A lot of people pointed out the fact that his wife was slowly starting to get more involved in her career now that her kids were getting older. They called it her second golden age. Mm-hmm. She's always been active, but more so now. But now with Lee's scandal, she's losing brand ambassadorships. People don't want to work with her, even for casting. People are so hesitant to work with her, even though she's not suspected of doing anything, because it's just a lot of baggage that's going to be attached to the sh- And that's my thing. Like, the emotions that we saw him show, like, you know, showing up to the station, I knew all of these things were in the back of his mind. Like, even if this test comes back negative, my wife and my children are going to be affected by all of this because as we said there's so many more troops to what's happening and it's unfortunate that all of it had to be out in the public right but also for them to be so focused on like like pulling him down but also taking everybody else down with him is insane like the bullying is insane and it's like I'm sure a lot of the people that are like up on their high horse that are judging this whole situation should not be doing that. Oh, now all the press is going to be about like, oh, she's starring in it. What's her husband doing? They also lost a lot of brand deals together because people really liked them as a family unit. So one of their biggest brand deals was with SK Telecom and to promote a kid friendly educational service on TV. They were quickly dropped. The controversy got so intense, the police sent both of their sons to the U.S. to get away from the media attention. Oh News goodness. reports started coming out that Lee was part of the top 1% of VIPs at a room salon. But in reality, he was allegedly just a guest at a room salon club dubbed as a 1% club. So like, the, it's like a play on words like, oh, he's top 1%, almost indicating he's there all the time. What is he doing there all the time? And again, I have nothing to say about the timing about all of this. But if I did have something to say, I would probably say there are no such things as coincidences. Mm-hmm. G-Dragon was accused of doing drugs based off of Nami's testimony. He was paraded around in the media, dragged through the mud. He almost lost his career. At one point, he was facing over $38 million in penalty fees for breaking brand ambassadorship Contract, deals yeah. because of this scandal. His life was about to be over. The police were basically barking to the whole nation that G-Dragon was the bad guy and they're going to get him. Then all of his drug tests come back negative. The public start to question if maybe the investigation had been excessive. The police feel like they've been caught with their fists in their mouths. So now with Lee, they're even more desperate. They have to do something to redeem their image. And yet, even with all these negative drug tests, Lee was called in for his third police questioning. And each time it was a press circus. Each time he had to stand in front of all these journalists that were actively digging up every single bad thing that he did from his past and twisting it in just really gross ways. He would have to apologize for something that he wasn't even proven guilty of doing yet. And December 23rd, 2023, so a few months ago, Lee walked into the police station for his third questioning. He would not walk back out for 19 hours. 
He walked in at 10 a.m. and would not walk out until 5 a.m. the next day. It's snowing what? outside. It's freezing. He's wearing a black coat and a scarf. He bows to the press, and the first thing he says are, first of all, I'm sincerely sorry to have the reporters wait because it ended so late today with the investigation. His statement to the press after his third and last interrogation was, I did my best to cooperate today. Now I ask the police to carefully determine which side of the statement is credible between me and the blackmailers. Once again, I'm sorry to keep you guys all waiting this late. I mean, there is so much wrong with this. In South Korea, you're not allowed to interrogate someone between 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. to safeguard their human rights. But the police stated that they received consent from Lee, so they're fine. The police argued, but he consented. But like, I don't think he really had a choice here. Yeah. Can you imagine if you yeah. reject that? Because then the backlash, the public backlash, they would just twist it and be like, oh my God, he, you know, he didn't want to do this and that. And then everybody would be like, oh my God, how dare he not cooperate with the police? He Can stupid. you imagine? That would be like career death instantly. Yeah. Yeah. The but there's a reason that it's not advised that police conduct long investigations. It's stated on average, people who falsely confessed to crimes that they did not commit were interrogated for around 16.9 hours before they admitted to that crime. That's typically the threshold. Also, side note, but not really because this is so strange, but they made him take mug shots every time he came in for an interrogation. They also refuse to let him use the underground parking lot when coming in. Usually high profile people are allowed because you don't want too much of a media circus for the integrity of the in investigation the and for the circus. safety of the parties involved. But no, the police wanted it as public as possible. They basically wanted him to have a perp walk. And when the police were questioned, why 19 hours? Like, yeah, okay, so what? He consented, but why 19? You know what I hate? I hate that they can just say police. I we, wish there's yes. like names like, okay, this is the man in charge who made these decisions because these are you're talking about some very 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 life altering mm -hmm. decisions. decisions that you're making right now like yeah. making someone park outside versus parking underground like you know what this is going to do to someone like imagine that's you like what's gonna, what what is that going to impact you and your families forever yeah i also feel like that is why a lot of the times even big companies don't get canceled for doing some of the most heinous stuff because there's not a face there's not a name they're like hidden behind this entity of a group of people mm -hmm. and it's just so vague same mm -hmm. with this case it's like the police right yeah, but these someone's are someone's making the call yeah someone's sitting there like i'm gonna get a promotion yeah they <laughs> did get a promotion the police stated the interrogation was going to last so long because they were also investigating his, his extortion claims. It's not just because he's a drug suspect. They're also trying to help him. Duh. But it was later uncovered that out of the 19 hours, they only spent one and a half hours on his complaint that he was being blackmailed. After 19 hours of being interrogated, Lee admitted he might have taken drugs, but by complete accident. He stated there was a situation where he was having trouble sleeping, and Nami said that she had a sleeping pill that she could let him have. But she said, no, don't ingest it. It's not going to work quickly enough. It works better and faster if you snort it. So he stated that she instructed him to snort it through a straw. He doesn't know if this was a drug or not. He genuinely thought it was a sleeping pill. Now, think about how strange this is. 19 hour interrogation, Lee is in the clear at this point. He's got all negative drug tests so far, but suddenly after a 19 hour interrogation, even though the science and the drug tests state otherwise, Lee is admitting to doing drugs, at least in some capacity. Almost immediately after the third interrogation, Lee's attorney stated this was completely unjust and they demanded a lie detector test for Lee. Now, this is not his attorney saying this, but netizens have kind of put this together. First of all, we don't know if the snorting of a sleeping pill through a straw incident even happened or if he was pressured to say that it happened by the police. So if Lee lied and was pressured to say it, if that's the case, he's innocent. Second, even if it did happen, could it have been just really sleeping pills that he snorted? Because Lee's drug test all came back clean. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, he's innocent. Mm -hmm. Third, Lee might have just been trying to be overly helpful with the police. He yeah. might have felt like honesty is the best choice here. And he yes. assumed that if he was honest with the police, they would help him find justice. Yeah, because there's no reason for him to confess to yeah. anything right now. What, what exactly. are you talking about? Because he's in the clear, right? Yeah. Which in that case, he's innocent. Fourth, Lee told the truth. He thought it was sleeping pills. It turned out not to be. If that's the case, how did it not show up on the drug test? Exactly. But also, he's innocent because he was drugged. Yeah. Now, fifth, if Lee didn't tell the truth, he knew that he snorted a recreational drug, but he was trying to play it off. 
That just doesn't make sense because his drug test came back negative. Why would he ever tell the truth now if that's what really happened? Yeah. Like he's exactly. clear. Why would he screw himself over the last minute? Yeah. Like this is anybody with brain cell will come to this conclusion. Like this makes no sense. For exactly. Him. Like no sense. And even if he said that and was not forced to say that, everything leads to he's innocent. Yeah. He's innocent. Like I don't know what to say. He's innocent. Yeah. There's no, His there's attorney no stated, if Nami was telling the truth, the drug test should have come back positive, but they came back negative. Exactly. Lee is finding himself in an extremely unfair situation. A lie detector test should be conducted on both of them to verify who is speaking truthfully. Allegedly, the police officer interrogating Lee was calling Nami the blackmailer by her first name, but in a very casual way. You would never really hear that in a professional setting. It just... Oh? Oh. Oh sounded too friendly, too casual in Korean verbiage, almost hinting at some sort of friendliness or even report build with NAMI. Then there was backlash. The police just stated, we investigated fairly according to the law and principles. So he gets released from his 19-hour interrogation and 24 hours right after, before Lee's death, two more phone calls were leaked. So one between Nami, the middle blackmailer, and Lee's friend, Mr. Kim, and the other between Nami and Lee. Both phone calls take place when Nami is trying to get $250,000. Now, the first phone call with Mr. Kim, the friend, Nami's talking about how she thinks someone bugged her house through her house plants. And side note, I've heavily, heavily shortened these. Nami just rambles like the whole conversation. So Mr. Kim asks, what do you mean they have a recording file on you? I think they planted something in my house. What? I think they planted something in my house. By the way, Lee has been in and out of my house a lot, and I think the blackmailer knows way too much about the dates and the information about my house. About, about what? Just personal conversations. You know, I had a deep relationship with Lee. Anyway, there were things like physical relationships with Lee, you know? Yeah. But I'm not really on the same team as the hacker, and I'm fine as long as I get arrested. Shouldn't we save Lee, though? I want to die. But what do we do about this? What do the blackmailers want exactly? Money. How much? 250K. Huh? 250K. I mean, there's no end to that, though. Even if we pay for it anyway, it's just going to keep going. No, no, no. Oh, but I know this guy. I don't care if, if I am poor. I'm going to protect Lee. Lee is okay. There's nothing else. Like, Lee didn't take drugs or anything. No, Lee did drugs. What? Lee did drugs with me. Who? Opa, Lee did drugs with me. He did what with you? It, he's, he would be drunk and then he would come out of nowhere and he'd have nowhere to go. And then, you know, he'd wake up at my house and I would try to get him to wake up. He wouldn't wake up. He had to go sign some contract with his wife and his manager came to my house and his wife called me like 60 times. He still didn't go home. I don't know, okay? I only met married men, so I don't know them well, but I think Opa has not cheated before much. That's why he likes to drink and he drinks and he doesn't know where to go. Wait, wait, so what kind of meds did he take? Ketamine and marijuana. I have a pro athlete friend who is doing a doping test right now. It's very accurate. So I did one yesterday and I knew that there was a lot of cannabis in my body, but Leopa was drunk and he asked me, do you guys have meds? Do you guys have drugs? So I gave it to him out of curiosity. Yeah, we met a little bit deeper than you thought. He often drinks at home and then doesn't have a place to go. So he would ask to come here and then he would keep asking for some drugs. He'd be like, do you have drugs? And then I would give him Viagra. Anyway, I tried the doping test and it's really accurate. Like you can even tell what kind of diet that you have. Oh my God. Look, Opa, I can go to prison because it's my fault. But shouldn't we try to protect Lee? Why does she keep saying that? Like, yeah. So manipulative. <sighs> If someone is recording in your home right now, then that means you know them. <gasps> Huang Hana, the milk chebar. But I never did drugs with her, I swear. But somehow I got involved. Listen, if we don't prepare the $250,000 by Wednesday, they're going to leak it to the media. Also, I'm just thinking how how all of what she's saying sounds very rehearsed like she's making sure she's saying all of these things on record. So if anything happens, she can use it. Does that not feel like like, cause she, I feel like she's sharing a lot of unnecessary information just because. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like. So you're saying that your drug tests come back and there's no drugs in your system? No, no drugs in my system. Then Lee would not have drugs in his system. It's in his hair. Oh, it's in his hair. But you said you didn't have any though. I bleached my hair seven times and I also didn't do drugs that many times. 
The conversation is just really bizarre. Some netizens feel like it confirms Lee wasn't doing drugs because even his close friend, Mr. Kim, seems surprised at the mention that he does drugs and Nami keeps telling him that he's doing drugs. Like, it's just kind of weird. It's like she's trying to gaslight him into thinking that Lee does drugs. Now, the it's second phone conversation weird. that was leaked between Lee and Nami, he's at golf practice and Nami's just acting incredibly stressed. Lee already knows about the blackmailer and the hacking and all of that, but she's just trying to talk in circles and get more money out of him. She wants $250,000. And at a lot of parts in the conversation, Lee sounds like he's really doubting her whole story about being hacked. She says she's like hacked multiple times. Her phone was robbed. It's just a lot. And now here's what's interesting. In this phone conversation with Lee, she doesn't bring up the fact that they did drugs. She's not... See, like, it seemed like she has been planning all of this. She's just like... It's almost like she knew what the play was with the blackmailer and that she was covering her bases and trying to make sure that she had all the evidence that she needed just in case, you know? Remember? You would come over when you're drunk Falsified and then you'd be like, evidence. do you have pills? She would just cryptically say things like, you did something with me because you were drunk. And Lee sounds confused. He's like, what? She keeps mentioning and hinting at the hacker and like they need the money because there might be drugs in his like, like just hinting at it. Never really mm -hmm. says it. Yeah. See, that's like she's trying to gaslight him. Yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. like, like almost like you don't remember because you were drunk. Yeah. Nami just spends the whole conversation trying to convince him to give her the 250k for the blackmailer. And side note, another thing that makes this whole thing so much more sad is one text message sent by Nami to Lee. A lot of netizens think that this proves that he didn't do drugs. This is when she's trying to convince him to give her the blackmail money. She texts him, Opa, just tell me yes or no for the money. It's so simple. I get you're tired, but right now my life is paralyzing. I didn't know that people around me that were near me were so evil. When that fuck your name my heart started racing even the simple fact that you will know that i did drugs is so embarrassing so i just wanted to hide it that's why i just told you to just leave oh uh, she's saying that you will be embarrassed of me doing drugs yeah like right. i would be so embarrassed if you found out that i did drugs yeah that because means he probably doesn't like drugs yeah he probably doesn't yeah. do drugs otherwise he'd be like you do drugs that's yeah. fine me too exactly it's very interesting. Now, these phone calls were released just a day before Lee's death, and I felt like it was more favorable to him. It proved that he was being blackmailed. Other than the conversation with Mr. Kim, which is just, again, Nami talking about Lee doing drugs, providing zero evidence, there's nothing, like really nothing. But the media, the public, they did not care. They used these phone call leaks to further their narrative that Lee was absolutely guilty of drugs. Maybe that, they, like they're talking about drug tests, so maybe he found a way to hack the drug test. One comment reads, one of the reasons why drugs are so rampant in our country is because the punishment is weak. Similar to China, we should impose life imprisonment or the death. Death penalty or life in prison for drugs? Not for SA, but for drugs. Penalty. The same day the phone calls were released, 24 hours before Lee's death, the government announced a whole group of promotions for police officers, including some investigators working directly on Lee's case. They were being promoted. December 27th, 2023, around 10, 12 a.m., Lee's manager went to stop by his place because he hasn't been able to get in contact with Lee all night. He was starting to get nervous. He let himself in and saw that Lee was not there. There was just a letter that resembled a will left in the house. The letter allegedly states something along the lines of, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. There's no other way. He immediately calls the police and they find Lee sung yoon dead in his car. Parked near Waryong Park, there was a coal briquette found in the passenger seat. He died of carbon monoxide poisoning. He was gone. It was stated by netizens, Lee sung yoon was not just a suspect in the drug case, but a victim in the extortion case. However, for 71 days, he was treated as a criminal. There's a saying in Korea that is, um, when I do it, it's romance. When you do it, it's a sin. Mm -hmm. It usually applies for cheating. When you are the cheater, you romanticize it. You have all these reasonings behind why you did it. But then when someone else does it, you read about it on the news. Or you hear your neighbor cheated or your wife cheats. They're despicable sinners and they deserve every bad, horrendous consequence that yep. comes their way. And again, I'm not defending cheating, but mm -hmm. cheating is maybe the only thing that we can assume Lee did. And even... Exactly. Like... 
That's why I keep saying we're not saying that he's an angel, but the fact that all of this is like what caused him to unalive is very, very sad. Because as I said, a lot of these people that are saying things that are saying on the internet and all that, they are not perfect in their family life, you know? And they are the ones that are laughing at other people's misfortunes. Not realizing how much it's hurting the person that's in the situation. The wife, the children, right? That we don't know the pure extent of that. While it's bad, does he really need to lose his career because of it? It's a conversation for him and his family and for them 100%. to decide how to proceed. It's sad. It might make him lose fans because they thought he's a great family man and this shatters their vision of him, but that's like the full extent. 100%. And that is my thought process through this whole thing. You know? Like the fact that this has blown up the way it has is very insane to me mm -hmm. that's like as bad as it should get but no he was never proven guilty of anything even his death was leaked to the press 13 minutes before chose on tv exclusively reported the news at 11 a.m a post went up on an online forum that read it looks like actor Lee sung yoon has died the first few comments were before 11 a.m and they were really confused they read i'm glad this is just clickbait hey don't play with people's lives like that well, there hasn't been a single article, so what is this bullshit? When the official news came out 13 minutes later, netizens started going back to that post and asking, why are there so many leaks in this investigation? <laughs> Who put this post up? Lee was actually known for his voice. He didn't really like it, apparently, much in the beginning. Some people describe it as being stuffy. Other people, so I asked my mom, and my mom says it's like very dongul dongul, which is like very round. It almost is like a round sound that rolls around in a cave. Other describe it to be very thick like honey, but it's kind of his charisma when he acts, but it's also the reason why his acting is so good. It's harder for him to show a very strong wide range of emotions clearly through his voice. He's able to do it so well, it just takes so much more effort. It's kind of incredible how many characters he's fit his voice into and his life into. He's played such a diverse role of characters throughout his career. People said he's got this unique talent. He just is able to dial in his aura so subtly. It's like he can control how much of him is actually in this character and how much isn't, how much he's pulling from himself. And it's, it's like the perfect amount each time. One director said, I think the job of an actor is to store up everything he has experienced and feel with his whole body and bring it out in front of the camera and dedicate your life to it. And Lee did that with every performance. But it took a while for audiences to warm up to him. And once they did, I mean, he just kind of exploded. I think for like seven years, though, nobody knew who this guy was. He worked so hard. He became an A-list actor. And even before that, before he was well off, before he was making good money, a lot of directors just remember how dedicated he was. There was one director who <laughs> signed Lee for the role of the movie. And the director's like, I'm just letting you know now, this budget is non-existent. So when we have a scene with multi-camera angles where you need five different angles in one shot, I only have one camera. So you're going to have to sit there and redo the same scene while I move around into the five different angles. Okay? And he's like, that's fine. Like, he never complained. He was described as being the A-list actor, even when he made it, to show up to these tiny events that his friends were hosting while all of his peers are like, well, I can't go because the appearance fee and this and that. He would just show up for free. And even before he made it, before he had money, he would get all of his junior actors and co-stars together and he would buy all their meals. He would also, this is when he barely has a job. Like he's got, he, maybe he booked one role. He doesn't have the next one lined up, but he would bring one of his junior friends over, just started. And he would go to the director. Director, I'm telling you, this guy, you got to book him for your next movie. Give him a chance, please. Like he's so, he's trying to give his friends roles when he hasn't even secured a role for himself. One director called him a treasure trove of actors. Cause every day he would pitch you a new up and coming actor that didn't have a chance. And he'd be like, I'm telling you, this is the one. And then he met his wife. Well, he didn't really meet her. He saw her in a movie. And then he asked a friend of his to be like, please, can you just let me meet her in person? One time you guys are at the same agency. That's it, just once. So they meet 
and they talked for 15 minutes and he had to go because he had to go film and he begged her for her number. And ever since then, I mean, I would say in hindsight, watching interviews of the couple, it doesn't feel like they have the perfect relationship, but it does seem like they have a lot of love and adoration for each other, but almost a lot of almost even fun. In an interview, when Lee's wife was asked about what Lee likes the most, she said, ah, that's so easy. He loves Taranda, like you did good. I'm so proud of you. You're doing good. good. Like, wow, ah, that's crazy. You did good. He loves that. She explains, and she's talking to Lee in this interview. You always say that you're not enough and that it's all luck or you were just picked or that the universe lined up. But no, I think it's just talent. In another part of the interview, his wife tells him, I love you, so stop trying to verify and test my love. And he just starts bust out laughing. And then she goes on to rant about him using 20 pots every time he makes a single meal. She says, just because you played a chef one time on a show does not mean you're a chef. The food's not even good and you use 20 pots. Okay? The two dated for seven years before getting married and having two sons. And Lee talked about the birth of his first son. And he said it was so emotional. He said when he was born, it was such an emotional moment. And then out of nowhere, the nurse asks me to sing. And I'm like, what? I'm crying. I start singing. And then I just start sobbing. And there's just so many times you can see how much he loves his kids. There was one variety show that he was on where he would travel through Europe on a train with a bunch of other celebrities. And he would periodically call his family and show them the scenery. But he's such a dad when he does it. Like you would never think that this guy was on stage to win an Academy Award. He doesn't know how to flip. He's there in like basketball shorts, hoodies and flip flops. He's trying to show his sons where he's sleeping on the train, but he doesn't know how to flip the camera over. So he's just like, like trying to get the angle nonstop. He's just awkwardly trying to show them. Afterwards, his wife is like, why do you look like that? Why is your face so bloated? He's like, yeah, I'm tired. And then she'd be like, okay, show me the train. Show the kids the train. And then he'd go back to showing the train. December 29th, 2023, just two days after his death, <sighs> his family held a private funeral. Lee's two sons flew back into Korea and- it A private funeral? The one that was so greatly televised? And you know, that's what hurt me the most. Because the public, the media was so quick to be there at every situation where they could make him news and he passed away and they were the same people that were there at the funeral right to cover the passing of this man that they caused the police the public the media are to blame for this man's death okay They always say, um, what's the saying? Something about, um, I can't remember. But it's just something about, like, before you cast the first stone, like, make sure that, you know, like, basically just make sure that before you call somebody out on something, make sure that you know you're perfect, you know? Like, your record is clean before you can look down on somebody and say they're a bad person or they did this, they did that. Make sure that you can say that you are the most perfect person in the world, right? How much of the people that are in this, that had all the bad things to say about this man, could say that they were perfect? Like, they had no bad thing attached to their name. It is Korean tradition that your loved one or your family member has to carry your funeral photo, and it's his son. a portrait of you, in front of you as your loved ones carry your coffin to the hearse, to the car. My dad did this when my grandfather passed away, and he said it was probably the heaviest thing that he's ever carried. But my dad was a full grown man when his dad passed. Uh, both of Lee's sons were really young 14 and 12. Mm. There were also post-it notes left behind by fans at the funeral, and they read, Rest comfortably now, and goodbye, my ajushi. I'll love you forever. At the SBS Drama Awards that was hosted that very night of his funeral, wow. everyone came, but netizens said there was a shift in the air. There was almost this contained, controlled anger running through everyone there. Anger and sadness. 
Hwaza had rehearsed two of her new biggest songs, Chili and I Love My Body. But in a single day, she changed her entire set and outfit, and she sang her song LMM, dedicated to Lee. The song is about breaking free and trying to face adversity and still have hope. The lyrics go, like the world is going to end, the sun sets into the long darkness. It feels like we're going to get thrown away. Even if we try to make more, we're still just hanging around the same place. But flowers bloom even in the falling rain. One of Lee's friends won an award and he had just spent the earlier part of the day at Lee's funeral. And now he's at this award ceremony and he went up on stage and he said, today is the day that I sent my brother to heaven. And today is also the day that I won this award. So I dedicate this to you in heaven, who has always been very serious about acting. Ah, 수상 소감보다는 그냥 편지를 하나 쓰고 싶네요. 이제 더 이상 아픔도 걱정거리도 없는 평안한 세상에서 편하게. 쉬길 빌겠습니다. 오늘 너를 하늘나라로 보낸 날인데 형이 상을 받았다. 언제나 연기에 늘 진심이었던 하늘에 있는 너한테 이 상을 바친다. 잘 가라 동생. Now, it was very quick for the police to be able to track SJ as the main blackmailer. SJ was not that tech savvy. She wasn't hidden well. I mean, she was arrested the day after Lee's death on December 28th, 2023. And this part really angered a lot of netizens. But she showed up to the police station in a big black puffer jacket hat, holding a two-year-old baby in her arms. So you remember how Nami is called a flower serpent, like a flower snake? Uh SJ is known by the people around her as the grass snake because she loved golf. But she didn't even love golf. She just loved going to golf clubs and looking for rich men to blackmail. Yeah, that's all she did. She would go on these apps, find rich married men, go to the golf course, find rich married men, sleep with them, and then she would extort them for money. More often than not, like I said, they're married. This is kind of her type for a reason. She would meet with them, sleep with them, and then say, Opa, I'm pregnant. So just imagine her calling up like 10 guys allegedly to state, I'm pregnant and it's your child, but I'm reasonable. I don't want a child. I don't want to break up your marriage. So let's terminate. But I need money to do that. The men would happily hand over the money. But a few days later, they would get another phone call. SJ sounds emotional. She sounds scared. They said, I have a condition that makes the termination process so much more complicated. They say it's going to cost a lot more. How much more? About $8,000 more. The men typically already came this far. There's no going back. So they would send her the money. And usually this is where her scam would end until January 2023. She actually ends up having a baby. She's actually pregnant. So she decides to expand her scam. She went from, oh, no, I'm pregnant. Send me money to terminate. Oh, no, they said I have a rare condition. So it's going to cost a lot more to, oh, well, oopsie. They actually told me my condition is uterine fibroid cancer. So I will die if I don't have the baby. Anyway, I gave birth and it's yours. It's your baby. So pay me child support. At one point, she was collecting child support for five different men for one child, a child that she didn't even want to take care of. It's alleged that SJ would get so excited to party that she would just drop her baby off at random people's houses and leave. She would not come back for days to get that baby. She was she was just so bizarre. Like everything about this was bizarre. And a lot of netizens felt like the craziest aspect about this case in terms of SJ was, I mean, all of this was for a Porsche. Not really, but kind of. She really wanted a Porsche Taycan. Taycan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. SJ wanted to scam people and blackmail Nami so that she could just drive nice cars. It's not like she was in desperate need of money to survive. SJ's dad is actually quite wealthy. He owns a big wild ginseng distribution business. And in a lot of Asian countries, ginseng can be upwards of like $1,500 a pound during high seasons. He bought her the apartment that she lives in. He bought her a luxury SUV to drive. He told her, these are your necessities. Anything outside of that, you're going to have to earn because you're in your late 20s. And it'd be so easy. He even offered her a job at his business where she could get paid $10,000 a month if she worked hard. It was not enough for her. 
It's likely that SJ brought the baby into the police station to get sympathy from the press and the police. It kind of backfired. She ends up getting charged on child abuse on top of her fraud and blackmail charges. And yeah, in addition, a plastic surgeon named Dr. L was also arrested for suspicion of supplying Nami and all these other people at the bar or the salon with drugs. The most infuriating part of all of this is that SJ and Nami's identities were being protected by the police. They were actually released by YouTubers. Which is very complicated because on one hand, I don't know if YouTubers should be the ones releasing people's personal information like that because what if they get it wrong? Who are they to make that decision, I guess? But at the same time, why do these people have the privilege of hiding their faces? Exactly. Like if nobody is innocent until proven guilty, then nobody is innocent until proven guilty across the board. And again, another infuriating thing is Nami, even the madam of the room salon, had a lot of luxury oh. items. She had bags that were worth like twenty to $30,000 a bag. She had a Cartier Benoit watch, like very expensive things. And again, nothing excuses blackmail. But these women, they didn't even need money to put food on the table or feed their kids. They did it for luxury items. A professor of criminal law said about the investigation, the interrogation should have stopped at the second drug test. They both resulted in negatives. However, because of the media and press attention, the police felt pressure to find a criminal. Maybe they felt like they had to keep trying. It's like they were forced onto a train that they couldn't stop. But the police disagree. The day after Lee's death, the Incheon National Police Agency held a press conference where the police commissioner general, one of the highest ranks, said, anyway, it's a really unfortunate choice. And I personally really like Lee. He's talking about the choice being Lee's, not the choice that the police is police. Oh, really? Him. What? Unfortunate choice. And I personally really liked Lee, but I don't agree with this as, you know, did the police investigation go mm -hmm. wrong? It would be difficult for us to handle such an investigation if we continue to conduct it behind closed doors. Why is no one saying the name of the police? I know Stephanie mentioned this earlier, but I'm just waiting for the name to be said. Don't you guys want to know the truth? Do you tolerate it when we investigate it with a private interrogation? So he's throwing the blame back at the public and the press, stating they would have been upset if they kept the investigation quiet. What? The CEO of the Korean Film Producers Union said, the police commissioner basically just said, what? You guys wanted this. Why are you doing this? To and I remember, I think, um, is it that his friend? Well, I guess we're going to find out because I feel like she's going to go into this. But I did see that... The, they they came together to kind of try and protect like actors. I don't know if it's just actors, but people in the public eye against things like this happening to them again. Kudos to them. Me and getting mad when you're accomplices in all of this. The police general continued, I cannot agree with the allegations of a time-consuming investigation. The period of investigation into Mr. Lee is the time it normally takes to conduct a drug investigation. And unlike G-Dragon, who was cleared of charges, we decided that further investigation was necessary, so we summoned him once more. To the very end, it seems like they will take zero responsibility. One netizen wrote, The Korean police never really cared about the extortion case because they thought they were going to bag a high-profile celeb on drugs. Two high-profile celebs, actually. Neither of whom actually took mm -hmm. any drugs it seems like they're only interested now because they need to have something to show for this pathetically inept investigation if you can even call it that another comment said i still don't understand at all why they took her word for it and persisted in trying to get lee to be tested for drugs when it was clear many weeks ago that she was lying why did they turn to bullying him a 19-hour interrogation that even his lawyer came out and said was confrontational it must have been horrific for his lawyer to say that and to demand a polygraph test he knew he wasn't going to be believed by anyone. Then the media came out with this sleeping pill straw story. The police and the media conspired to set up a lynch mob and netizens delivered. Police corruption at its finest. That's what the comment reads. For Korean celebrities, even being questioned and cooperating with the police, which are typically seen as traits of a good civilian, someone who is willing to talk to the police and let them investigate, they get treated like criminals instead. It just ruins their reputation regardless of if they actually committed a crime or not. My dad said it actually went so beyond that. I was talking to my parents about it. And my dad was saying the clips of him being brought in to be questioned were played over and over and over again on all the news networks, nonstop. My dad's a huge news watcher, just nonstop. No news would develop and they would just play that clip over and over and over and over and over again. Every day, nonstop. He wasn't even guilty and he was being paraded around like some sort of criminal, like a circus criminal. 
Even Samuel, the guy that reported Nami to the police alongside SJ, said he regretted getting the police involved. He thought, first of all, I didn't even know celebrities were involved. I mean, involved, quote, involved. He thought he was just reporting Nami. And he said that he was so shocked because the person who did so many drugs and spread drugs to others is sitting right there. But they're like going after celebrities who didn't do anything. They're just bombarding them. It's like the, the criminal is sitting right in front of you. What are you talking about? One that is instated, someone who had a long life ahead of them died, and that blood is- And that's the thing, it just goes to show that at the end of the day, they didn't even care about the actual bust, because if they did, the person that really committed the biggest crime should be the one that's plastered all over the news, but instead, they wanted the hype of a celebrity name and a bust that had to do with the celebrity, so much more than the actual truth of the matter on a lot of people's hands. The blackmailers, the police, the press, and us, the public. Who do you believe is the most at fault? The two women that blackmailed him and lit the torch? Or the police that grabbed that torch from them and lit Lee's house on fire? Or the press that made sure that the whole world saw Lee's burning house every second of every day? Or the netizens that came to throw gasoline into the house from outside? And a big trigger point was the timing of all the leaked phone calls being released. The leaked phone call where he tells his mistress he likes her. I mean, the timing of that to overshadow his negative test results, mm -hmm. it's just really bizarre. And also, what was the purpose? It's a private conversation between two parties, which, yeah, it's not the best look for him, but it's not illegal. So why is that worthy of a leak? Why is that more newsworthy? Netizens have stated at the very, very least, this is personality murder, reputation murder. One netizen asked, is Korea one of those hyper anti-drug countries? Is that why? And someone responded, yeah, but don't worry. They make up for it by being the country with the highest alcohol Ooh, consumption gee. in the world. G-Dragon posted a black screen with a white chrysanthemum on the day of Lee's funeral. He did not explicitly state why, but it's widely known in Korea that white chrysanthemums are reserved for mourning and grief. One netizen commented, regardless of what you think of G-Dragon, G-Dragon can relate. With Lee, I mean, he was left alone by the company mm -hmm. that helped raise him to the top. Silence amongst industry friends, police pushing a hidden agenda, YouTubers, TikTokers, all going nuts, analyzing his speech patterns, his walks, his body language, preparing him up as some sort of grand lamb sacrifice alongside poor Lee sung -yun. And worst of mm -hmm. all, they'll do it again to someone else sooner or later. In one of Lee's most iconic shows that oh he was gosh. in, it's called My Mister. There's a famous line in the ending scene where Lee goes, Tian, are you at peace now? What are your thoughts on this case? Let me know in the comments. I will see you guys on Sunday for the next episode. Stay safe. Bye. It's funny she mentions my mister in the end because I literally have this movie on my Netflix watch list for quite some time now with IU and Lee. And it's something I've been wanting to watch for a while and even more now because of like his passing and just wanting to check out more of his work. But it's just really unfortunate. Like seeing cases like this coming out of SK all the time with just how the public parades people's downfall is very unfortunate. And the culture behind doing that, it's like everybody is so perfect and oh my god how dare you do this thing. But at the end of the day, we all know it's fueled because they're in the public eye and you always have to be this picture perfect representation of, um, I don't know, like an idol put on a pedestal all the time. And how dare you make one mistake? How dare you? It's really unfortunate that all of this came down to what it did and... As Stephanie said in the end, you know, it's it's going to happen again. And it's so sad to say that, but it's going to. And do they learn from this? I don't think so, because it's, it's not the first time, right? I have nothing more to say. This was... This was a very informative video by Steph. Her videos are always well done, you know, the storytelling from beginning to end. Um, I hope you guys liked watching this one with me, you know, and yeah, I have nothing more to say. Rest in peace to Lee Sun Kyun.